What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today we had a mixed bag in the indices with the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones slightly declining with the NASDAQ 100 inching higher. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, and because it's Friday, we will check in on our bank account, which we can see is up 0.22% for the day. On the one week performance, we're up 0.95%. And on the one month performance, we're up 4.03%. On the three month performance, we're up 8.53%. But remember, this account did not start trading until July 8th of 2021. So we actually haven't had this account live for three months. So we're doing very well in the bank account and we're absolutely crushing this market. And Bank Trade Alerts does well in all market conditions. I'm really excited for some market volatility and possibly even a stock market correction so you can see just how well bank does in bearish conditions. If you're interested in trying out bank trade alerts, I am running a 50% off promotion code and you can find out all of the details and how to join in the links in the description below. All right, jumping back over to the S&P 500, we can see SPY was very flat on the day, only going down 0.02%. But intraday, we did see volatility and we did have to test that 5 EMA as support. Now this resistance at 353 is still a very strong resistance. And as you can see, we are spending some time around that level. This is about the fourth time in five days that we're testing this resistance and have not had a decisive breakout above this level. Now there's no reason to panic or sound the alarms because we still do have price action that is above all the moving averages and we still do have the very strong bull trend. However, anytime price action is struggling at a resistance level, you do want to consider the possibility that we are reaching a top and we're due for a pullback. Once we get a pullback, we could test critical support, which is now at this 20 simple moving average at 447. So if we get a pullback, we could come back down to support levels that are very critical before we bounce and possibly head to those next price targets. You'll know that's not going to be the case if we see a decisive price action breakout above 353. And in that event, you will want to watch the price targets above at 357 and 461. So whether or not we get a pullback before we get to those higher price targets, or we just continue to blast through the resistance and head there now is to be determined. But do remember we are in September, which is typically a very volatile month. So you do want to be cautious at these levels and you don't want to over leverage your account. We also will have support levels at 451, 449 and the support just below the 20 simple moving average at 446. Don't forget about that gap fill at 443.8 because if we get price action below the 20 simple moving average, it's very likely we're going to fill that gap quickly. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were green today going up 0.31% with price action still closing above all the moving averages and we still do have this very strong bull trend in the NASDAQ. Just like with SPY, we do have a resistance level on the triple Qs that we are struggling to break above and that level is 382. We've tested that resistance level for three days in a row and have not yet had a price action breakout above that level. That doesn't mean we can't break out above that level, but just like I said with SPY, just be cautious. We could get a pullback from this level to our next support level at 376 or our critical 20 simple moving average support level at 372. If we do get a breakout above 382, it should be a quick trip to our price target at 388. So look for that scenario breakout as well. If we close below the 20 simple moving average, we still do have support at 370 and the gap close at 368. So watch for price action breakdown to close the gap at 368 in a hurry. On the Dow Jones, we were down 0.21% today with price action still closing above all the moving averages and we still do have the bull trend. But one thing you can notice about the Dow Jones is that it's going absolutely nowhere. It's just going sideways and it's really just stuck in a consolidation even though it is still in a bull trend. We've seen this plenty of times with ARK and the Russell 2000, so you need to be aware that when price action gets choppy, it is very possible we're about to lose the bull trend. You'll know because we'll get a price action close below this critical support level right around 353. Below that, look for the gap fill at 351.8 and strong support at 351 and 350. So there's still a ton of support just below, but if we lose the bull trend, that will be a warning sign that we could be rolling over. To the upside, look for resistance at 355, 356.5, and 359. On the Russell 2000, we were down about a half a percent today, and we found support exactly where we should have at support at 227. If we break below 227, look for support at 224 and 222. Above 222, we're still looking bullish, and the Russell 2000 could regain the full bull trend very soon. If we start closing below 222, look for support at 219 or the gap fill at 216. To the upside, we have resistance at 230 and 233, and above 234, we could start breaking out to brand new all-time highs. 
On the ARK ETF, we were up 0.19% today and we did test that resistance level at 125.6 and failed to close above that level. If we get a positive breakout above resistance, look for resistance at 128 and 131. To the downside, we should have support at 122.7 and our 20 simple moving average at 120.5. If we break and close below 120, look for the gap to fill very quickly at 116. Art K is very close to having the full bull trend. We just need to see that 20 simple moving average curling back up and crossing above the 50 EMA and RK will have the benefit of the full bull trend. On the VIX, we continue to see warning signs with the VIX climbing 1.86% today because it is bouncing off of the support trend line, which does mean the VIX just put in a higher low. We can see a very clear pivot in the VIX where we did bounce off support, and this low is definitely higher than this low, which is definitely higher than these lows. So the VIX is slowly but surely climbing on higher lows, and it is still in this consolidation wedge. So this does mean we could see the VIX spiking towards the top of this wedge, which means the VIX would get all the way back up to about 21. If we see the VIX spiking above 20 and then closing above 23, that will tell us that we're going into a stock market correction. So the VIX analysis is very important to pay attention to because the VIX could predict the next stock market correction before it's even here. So watch these levels. And if the VIX does break down and start heading towards 14, that will actually be a bullish breakthrough and a bullish development in the VIX and then it should tell us to expect brand new all-time highs and look for those next price targets higher. On Bitcoin, we're currently up about 1.8% and Bitcoin did tag that resistance and price target level at 51,000 and so far it's getting rejected at that level. However, we still do have a full bull trend and we still are holding up above support. So it's possible Bitcoin is going to blast right through 51,000 and start running to brand new all-time highs. So if Bitcoin breaks out above 51,000 and gets a daily price action close above that level, that will be extremely bullish and I will expect to see Bitcoin at brand new all-time highs this year. If Bitcoin fails to break out and gets rejected at resistance, look for Bitcoin to potentially come back to any of these support levels at 48,000, 45,000, 44,000, or 43,000. Below 43,000, Bitcoin will be looking like it's rolling over and getting ready to die, so watch those support levels very closely. On a breakout above 51,000, look for Bitcoin to start running to about 58 to 59,000. On Amazon stock, we were up 0.43% today and we do see Amazon pulling back from that resistance trend line and we have not yet fully closed the gap above. The gap closes fully at 3580 and we do have two resistance levels on the way there. We have resistance at 3500 and we have resistance at 3552. So watch those resistance levels closely and do understand that closing that gap could also be another resistance level, so look for 3580 as well. To the downside, we obviously have support at the 5 EMA, which we found support there today at 3450, but below that, we have a much more critical support level at 3400. Below 3400, we could look like we're coming all the way back down to about 3311. Overall, Amazon still doesn't have the full bull trend, but this is definitely a very bullish bounce off of a critical support level. So once Amazon gets the official breakout, it should have no trouble closing the gap and it could start to run to new all-time highs. On Tesla stock, we were up 0.16% today and we still see Tesla building up that support level at 732. This could be building up a strong support level to get a strong base to start running to our next price target at 765. If Tesla breaks below 732, look for support at 714.5, 709, and then right around 692. Below 692, we still have a strong support trend line to prevent Tesla from forming a lower low. Right now, Tesla is forming higher highs and higher lows, so that does mean Tesla is in a bull market. On Apple stock, we were up 0.42% today, and it does look like Apple is about to get to our price target at 156. Price action is still well above the 5 EMA, and we're starting to see these Bollinger Bands expand, which will allow the price action to get to our price target at 156. We have the full bull trend and we still have strong support at 151 and 149.5. Below 149.5, Apple will look like it's rolling over and we could still have support at 146 and below that we could come back down and fill the gap at 137. On the financial sector, we were down 0.57% today and we see the financials breaking below three of our four moving averages and losing the full bull trend. Look for the price action to potentially come back down to retest the 50 EMA. On the industrials, we were down 0.61% today, closing below the 5 EMA, but still holding on to the bull trend. The healthcare sector was up 0.11% today, closing above all the moving averages and still holding on to that strong bull trend. The energy sector was down about a half a percent today, closing above three of the four moving averages and still closing below the 50 EMA. 
If the price action could get back above the 50 EMA, the energy sector could start to look bullish yet again. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, you can definitely see strong resistance, but we still do have strong sectors. It does look like the financial sector could be rolling over, so we need to watch that very closely. But overall, the stock market is very risky at these levels, but you have to remain objective and we still have bullish price action with a bullish trend. Obviously, everything is subject to change, so watch the price action at critical support. If you see the price action breaking through critical support levels, that will be your immediate warning sign that we could be going through a correction. September is typically very volatile and potentially even bearish for the year, so you need to remain cautious and you need to understand that the higher the market goes, the more risky it becomes. Now is not the time to be taking on a ton of risk or over leveraging your account. If you can't stay disciplined, you're not going to stay profitable. If you need to, just walk away from your trading account at these levels and don't be tempted to FOMO in at the top. These levels are definitely nearing a top because these are the highest levels the stock market has ever been. And as we always know, the stock market can't go up forever. It's always going to need a pullback or a correction. So watch these resistance levels very closely because these resistance levels could always lead to a pullback or even a correction. Stay disciplined and stay patient and make sure you're remaining objective. Don't try to short a bull market. It's always safer to raise cash and then put that cash back to work at lower prices. Also remember that I do have my own trade alert service called Bank Trade Alerts that only trades Qs. Bank Trade Alerts is crushing this market and it's very simple to follow and does very well in all market conditions. I'm running 50% off promotion code for your first month, so if you're interested in trying out Bank Trade Alerts, now could be the best time. You can find out all of the details in the links in the description of the video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis to help you navigate this market and stay on the right side of the trade. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community, you can find out how to join by clicking on the link in the description. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.